Hello and welcome once again to another thrilling week here at Beetle Universe. I am Professor Moptop and thank you a million times over everybody always for being part of the university. Today we're going to be talking about a Paul McCartney song. We're back in the White Album uh, territory. There's a lot of cool stories, a lot of cool things about the White Album. There's also a lot of inconsistencies about Beatles songs. It seems specifically Paul McCartney songs have a few more inconsistencies than the others. Let's start back way at the beginning, through the days when the Beatles were still Silver Beatles or Quarrymen. George and Paul would talk about how they would go to parties and they would try to impress the birds, which is what uh, young English men refer to as women. It's about the equivalent of chick. Nothing harmful, but it's not exactly proper. Well, they would bring their guitars and play, and one of the things they would play they didn't even realize was a Bach song. It was the Fiore in E minor. It comes from 1717. Um, there's a lot of inconsistencies about things in the Beatle world. What came when? Who said this? What happened when? If you think the Beatles have some confusing history uh, questions, Bach is even more. At any rate, Paul would um, play these songs and uh, Eventually, this song would morph into something very similar that sounded to Blackbird. Well, Paul has a few stories as well about when exactly he decided to make the song Blackbird, because they would play something that sounded very much like Blackbird, but it didn't have any lyrics until 1968. Now, Paul has a couple stories. One of them says that in India, he woke up early in the morning, saw a Blackbird flying, and put the lyrics to this beautiful song that he has. He also says on another occasion that it was about feminism and female oppression and that there was a racist element to it. It's not certain if he had this at the time or if this kind of became later uh, a thing that was um, one of the inspirations for the song. It was also very likely written shortly after Martin Luther King was killed, so it might have all of these elements involved. But as we say with the Beatles, we don't necessarily know for sure all the time. Now John said very late in his life that he gave Paul a real important line to the song. Paul although uh, says that it was all Paul, so you're gonna have to believe who you believe. Now it's one of the many songs, especially from the White Album, where the Beatles have naturistic themes as in a bird as a symbol of um, overcoming adversity. Paul's story changes quite a bit throughout the years. Um, after they got back from India and they demoed all the songs, this was one of the songs that they demoed, and it was one of the very first songs that was worked on during the White Album sessions. It was at Abbey Road, and Paul actually recorded it in the courtyard. He wanted to make it sound like it sounded like it was being recorded outside. Jeffrey Emmerich said, why don't we record it outside? So they grabbed a bunch of wires and they uh, dragged it outside, and Paul would record the song alone. And he had three microphones. One was for his guitar, one was for his voice, and one was for the foot tapping that you hear throughout the song. Sometimes you hear them, um, uh, you'll read that it's actually a metronome, but it is in fact Paul McCartney just tapping his foot on the concrete, and that's where that song comes from. After they got it all recorded, they did a little bit more work on it, and they added bird sound effects. Now there was a couple of actual birds that were flying around outside of the EMI studios, and those were recorded onto the track. There was also a few bird sound effects that were uh, recorded by a guy named Stuart Eltham. Now he is the EMI sound engineer and he has quite the memory because there's a lot of different sound effects throughout the Beatle career that he remembers specifically where they were recorded and what they came from. He recorded the bird sound effects in his backyard and eventually these birds that were recorded wound up on a reel-to-reel -reel tape and they were put inside of a um, a big cabinet that had a whole bunch of different uh, uh, categories and different volumes of sound effects and the bird one was the one that they selected to get the sound effects for Blackbird. Real life birds, real life Paul McCartney actually recorded outside. Here comes uh, a real life cat. This is Honey Pine just saying hello. Hello. At any rate, that brings us to the end of another week here at Beetle U. Thank you a million times over. As always, you're going to be getting two hunks of audio in your uh, email. And uh, there's going to be two very interesting parts all about Blackbird. Look for those. And as always, if you have any issues, let me know. And if you don't have any issues, you can also let me know. Thank you so much a million times over. We appreciate you each and every day here at the university. Thank you.